Hello guys and you're welcome to our level design course. In this course we're going to learn how to build plat level designs for platformer games, especially 2D side-scrolling platformer games. We're making that specific because there are lots of other uh, game formats. You know, we have the top-down, we have the isometric, but we're just going to focus on 2D side-scrolling platformer games. And these steps are not written on stone. We can always change these steps and kind of like twist them to achieve the same aim. Now I call this the master theory because I, I kind of like came up with this and put them all together. Now some elements don't contain level design elements but they are quite as important as other uh, elements now they are much more than this and you can actually take fewer than that but it depends on what you uh, feel is important at that point so right now uh, I first begin with the idea right so you have to know like what kind of game we are uh, we are creating right so this time around we said we're building a uh, 2d platformer side scrolling game you could have a top down isometric game so it's really specific and it's really important to specify what kind of game you're building such that you could just tell your design team and your uh, focus now who is your target audience like is this for kids is this for adults you know is it an advanced game is it a uh, physics game like who is your target audience that's also important are you targeting people between the ages of say uh, three to five or are you targeting people between the age of you know uh, 10 to 18 are they male are they female are they teenagers so you need to know what content and who your target audience is and that way you can build related content that will fit in that target audience so you just know who you're building your game for and then you can actually express that through the level uh, design also what kind of feelings do you want the player to uh, experience do you want the player to have like a sad you know kind of like moody feeling or you want to elevate them and make them happy this is important because you could add things like uh, like the colors you could use to show mood and expression also if it's like for a horror game you want to have like dark muted colors and also to include the kind of music so you don't want to have happy music with some green island for some happy games like and then you could have some kind of like dark ish kind of like music with keys and pianos for uh, dark games now another very important thing is the story like your story tells you everything about your game including your level design like basically when you know the story of your game you actually know where the player is you don't actually know where your player is going, you know what stage your player is, you know what kind of characters you know your players have, you can specify you know the enemies, you can st specify the kind of collectibles if you have a good story. And basically if you're a level designer, you most likely work with a team of artists and you know story writers, animators and designers. So you always have to look at the story and understand, oh, if your uh, director tells you, hey, you know what, the player is in a market scene and the market is like upside down and all that you know that you're going to design a level that has a market and you can actually know what uh, you know elements you place in your story is, your story is also going to tell you your you know, main character you know who uh, how the enemies are and, and all that stuff so you can work with your team and then there's also the idea cleanup now this is not uh, specific to level designers but level designers can also limit the ideas you know you have if it's too over ambitious if it's going to be expensive it's going to be technically impossible you can always specify these things another thing to actually look at is whether you can fund the idea if it's going to be expensive do you need extra help if you look at your team and understand if your team has designers or artists and all that or you need to hire external artists and you could actually go to uh, sites like uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo to actually get uh, external help from uh, funding to support your project also another key important feature is to look at what tools we're going to be using like for instance we're going to be using unity and then I'll show you also how to use construct in the course and also what art tools you're going to be using. You can use your, your classic uh, pen and paper or pencil and paper or you can use Photoshop, any of those uh, modern tools you feel you're comfortable with. And then we can actually look at the uh, the engine, whether the engine is going to use extensions or not. But again, some of these are not really uh, based for uh, level design only. So another th key thing is the rules for the game. If you have a specific set of rules, you can actually uh, kind of like stay to that boundary and then, you know, you don't overshoot things. For instance, you can say your level is going to have a secret room or sub levels within that same level. And there will be no more than five puzzles for each levels and no more than three puzzles for a sub level 
right so basically you have a level and within your level you can have like a secret room so you can just specify these things automatically like in each uh, level you're gonna have just two secret rooms and that's it your entire game everybody knows you're gonna have two secret rooms maybe maximum of three but by defining these things it's going to add to the experience right and also how to access those rooms are those rooms going to be uh kind of like available are they going to be hidden do you need to break things to access those rooms or is there going to be like a sound that's going to be you're going to hear to actually know that there's a secret there so all these have to be like you know uh specified now another uh, very important thing now we're in the level design proper is the name of your level if you can name your level and give your level a name and you actually tell your team hey this is the name of my level right let's say i call my level floating city or rusted pipes or fire bath it should automatically kind of like give you ideas of what you expect to see in that level right if i say chilly winds you're gonna have these winds that just you know kind of like randomly appear and kind of like you know uh, hurt the player or some kind of thing like that so it'll give you an idea when you actually have the name of your level it'll specify your location and it also give you ideas of what props you could have to place in those levels to push your level and bring it out so once you have your level name and you have an idea of what your level is going to be like it's uh, kind of like nice to prototype your level now by prototyping you're not using any fancy artwork you just want to know where the player is going to be jumping where the player is going to be landing what scenes uh, the player is going to be transitioning where you're going to place your enemies where you're going to place your switches you know and what transitions you're going to have in your level right so these things are uh, going to be like always changing because you're not going to submit that to your art director if you don't have an art director or you're an indie solo game developer you can always look at it later on and say hey i don't want this and you can totally change it that's uh totally fine and we can jump to the puzzle design now for the prototype you can also mix that with the puzzle design as well so for a puzzle design you could use uh, switches you could use pushable platforms you could use gravity zones you could use uh, a lot of mechanics that can allow you to like you know jump around you could use keys you can use doors you can use chests, chests all to design your level it's very important to play test your uh, level because if it's too difficult or it's too challenging especially in the initial stages people are not going to like it so you can actually listen to feedback from other people such that they can uh, tell you what you can improve what you can use to improve in your level if you have a general feedback from people of different you know calibers and types and uh, they actually play your level and you know tell you it's fine and they're not trying to like you know uh, you know uh, to take a piss you actually understand that your level is actually good and you can leave it that way but once you have a few complaints trust me eventually when you ship your game and your level design is bad it's going to just stick to your uh, game and that's not going to be a nice thing to do so uh make sure you listen to the player uh, the players who people who t uh, play testing levels you know it could be yourself later on once you actually doubt it then it's not really you know that uh, smooth but sometimes people could test it and then they could enjoy the experience they have with the level and they'll be happy after that as well and then finally after designing your switches puzzles keys chests doors you've play tested your level finally it's time to polish your level only polish your level after you're satisfied with the prototype and it's good to go and you have a green light always do that before you jump into the polishing stage and here this is where you could add post-processing effects you could add background arts you could add some music to make it more you know vibrant you could even use color palettes to specifically push a certain mood that's the polish that's that game feel you want to have again if you're an indie dev you might not really go uh, all out and uh, kind of like do this like triple a companies but hey even some cool awesome uh, indie games like uh, hollow knight they actually uh, actually drop that level of polish in those games so uh that's going to be our uh, rough theory and uh in our next lesson we're going to jump into our prototype stages and I'll show you how I kind of like build prototypes and you can follow along, build the same prototypes. And I'll do a lot of explaining on how I do what I do. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.